Hey everybody, hey, hey, hey. I know I've been gone about three days, but man, it has been a busy, busy, busy three days. Or say, oh my goodness, you look so fabulous. Thank you, Nima Marcus. You haven't been on my YouTube or my Facebook page today. Wait till I tell y'all what happened. Maxwell Ellis, how you been feeling? When I tell you every day, I just been praying for you. Every time I think about your name coming through TikTok, I pray about I pray for you and your family. Even if it's just a quick guard, just give them strength. Y'all just been on my mind. And it's so amazing how you just kind of meet people through social media. You don't even know them and you find yourself praying for them. Well, we only going live on TikTok tonight. I don't know what happened to my other phone. It's somewhere in this house. And I'm just not sure where it is. I can remember I used it. The last time I went live, I think it was Friday. I think. Or maybe I went live Thursday. I don't remember, but the last time I used it, because I was going live on both, I have both my tripods right here. We were going to do the movie in the yard Sunday night, because remember I told y'all, I said, ooh, we're going to do movie night. We put up the big, I have the big 12-foot uh, TV screen. Hey, brown sugar. We blew it up and forgot to get the laptop from my daughter-in-law to hook it, and I didn't have the right card to do it from my phone, so it was a bust. We put the little TV up and in 30 minutes we had to deflate and bring everything back down because I didn't have the right cord to do it for my phone. So that's why. But I had my tripods out there. I said I was going to let my TikTok people watch the movie with us, but I couldn't. So it was a mess. We're having a little pool party from my granddaughter. And he was saying maybe after the pool party we can put a movie on and let the kids watch it. But the way them mosquitoes were swarming all out there, I don't know. We'll just pick another night that we're going to do it. And then I'll just put the... Uh, I'm going to try to find a good movie. And if I'm not scared of the lizards and the mosquitoes, I'll sit out on the patio one night and do it. Did everybody have a good Memorial Day weekend? Hopefully y'all were like me and were able to be off for a couple of days. Who barbecued? That's what I need to know. Who barbecued? And y'all notice I didn't say barbecue. Y'all know down here in the south, we'll say barbecue in a minute. <laughs> we will say barbecue. So who barbecued for the weekend? Okay, brown sugar, she sure did help. I barbecued, and brown sugar did help. Hey, welcome, welcome, welcome. Y'all already know I got my topics. We already ready. Hey, Kitty, what's going on? Welcome. I hope you had a good weekend, Kitty. Now, I'm going to tell you a trick I use. Okay, Kitty say she had a nice relax. I'm going to tell y'all a trick I use when you're going to barbecue ribs. Now, here we only do pork ribs. I don't know about all those big old uh, brontosaurus beef ribs. You know them beef ribs be this big. Those big brontosaurus ribs. We don't do those over here. We do the nice little pork ribs. You season them up really, really good. Whatever seasoning you like. Everybody likes something different. Some people only like salt and pepper. We, you know, everybody's different. So, season them up. Hey, Kitty, thank you for the roses. Season up your ribs on both sides as much as you can, whatever you want to put on it. Wrap them up really tight in tinfoil and just put them in the oven on like 200 for about five hours. When I tell you those ribs are going to be super, super tender, then you take the tinfoil that's already, they already wrapped up. And once your pit is hot and smoking, because I wrapped them out in tinfoil, then I double wrapped it again. So when I put them in the oven, they will be just steamy and hot inside that tinfoil pack. Then I took the whole, I had three slabs. I put all three slabs on the pit and I opened up the foil a little bit. So now they didn't need to cook long because they're already tender, but all the smoke flavor got in them ribs. And oh my God, when I tell you my ribs were good. So that's a little trick you can use. You put them on 200 for about five hours. You can do everything else you need to do. That way you're not waiting for them ribs to cook all day long on a pit and get tender. Now you can cook them, then, but they're going to be hard as rocks if you don't let them get tender. So that's a trick to kind of cut down some of your barbecue time. If you know them ribs will take you a long time, cook them in that oven until they get tender. And then just let them smoke on that pit. And that's going to be the best rib. So if y'all didn't know, now you know. I told y'all I'd do a little cooking video called Cooking with G Butterfly. But I did everything on the pit Sunday, I mean Saturday. So on Sunday, all I had to do was like put it on a real low temp in the oven just to get it warm so everybody can eat. But I did my potato salad, my beans. I did that. I made a dump cake. I did that on Sunday. We had tea. Gonna put some oxtails in the Insta Pot. Oh, you know what, Farty Dog? What's going on? I've done that before and they taste so good. I love the Insta Pot. We have one. And I think I've used it. Well, I bought it about two and a half years ago. I probably used it two and a half years ago and it's been sitting in the closet ever since. Not in the closet, but you know, in the cabinet ever since. Because I love to cook. I love to cook. I just don't have a reason to cook. 
my children are grown. It's just me and it's just my mama here. And sometimes she'll cook and I eat or I cook every now and then, but I can pick up some on the way home because it's not like I have like a whole family I need to cook for. So, but I love to cook. But them oxtails so damn high, you get three of them little circles. That's ten dollars. I'm telling you, them oxtails high right now. How you season them? What you mean, uh, forty dog the oxtails? I, you know what? I just use the seasonings that I like in my cabinet. I'm a big proponent of powdered garlic, onion powder, salt, pepper, tonies. There's this one called Badia. I guess it's called Badia. Badia. I don't know how you pronounce it. Hey, oh, Sylvia, you love to bake, really? I didn't know that. Yes, Kitty, they are very high. Um, it just depends. It really just depends on what I feel like. But I make sure that I season them really, really well. Because you can put just a little season on your meat and it's not going to help. But if you put a lot of meat on there, you're going to be good. Buddy Roll, how you doing? Welcome. Hey, Beverly Hagley, how y'all doing? Welcome. I know I've been gone a couple of days. Buddy Roll, glad you came back. You're always supporting. I appreciate that. You too, Beverly Haley. You always over here supporting. I appreciate it. Fresh onions and bell pepper. Yep, you got to have fresh onions, fresh bell pepper. Fresh garlic is better. Now, if you can't get fresh garlic, you can get the little jar. You know, the little garlic, the minced garlic being a little bitty jar, about this big around, set up about this high in the grocery store. Put some of that seasoning, and you got to let those uh, uh, oxtails cook down. I know a lot of people cook theirs down in the oven. I've, I've only did mine on top of the stove before. Okay, so I got y'all on the line. Let me tell y'all what happened this morning. I go to work very early. I'm leaving out of here. It's still dark when I'm going to work. <clears throat> I work on the other side of town. And I have to be there relatively early. Um, every morning, I do the same routine. Every single morning. I mean, most people do. Anybody that's on this line right now watching me, if you're going to work or whatever it is that you do every single day, you probably have a routine and do it the same way every single day. I know y'all probably have heard me mention before I have a two-story house. Uh, I'm usually all you the beautiful different colors that orange is doing something. But well, thank you, Kitty. I appreciate that. I just bought this shirt uh, yesterday, matter of fact, and I decided to wear it to work today. You can't really see my pants, but I bought some pants with this orange in them, too. Kind of hard for me to move my leg, and I'm going to tell y'all why. But I start, I saw this shirt in uh, Burlington about, no, Ross. I saw this shirt. It's like a linen. I saw this shirt in Ross about two weeks ago, and I started to buy it. And I'm like, nah, I don't need any more clothes. You would have to see my closet. One day I need to do a live from that closet. Y'all going to be, what the hell? It's a disaster. I really need to go through and purge and get a lot of that stuff out of there. But anyway. I put the shirt back. I said, you know what? I do not need this shirt. I don't need another shirt. Let me just put it back. So I put it back. I was at a different Ross yesterday, and I saw these pants. And I like bright colors and prints. And I said, ooh, those will look cute. I can throw those on and rock them and wear them to work. Or I can put on a cute t-shirt, wear them on the weekend. But, uh, hey, Dryer Buzz, how you doing? Oh, you know what? I'm going I'm to switch subjects just because I know Dryer Buzz is on here. You know, I've been telling y'all all the time, if you want soap, Go over to uh, Soaps by Dry Buzz. She's in the chat right now. But one thing I noticed, Dryer, I don't know how your soap is different from anybody else's soap. I'm still using the same bar of soap. But I promise y'all her soap lasts a long time. And you notice when you buy soap from the store, you, you know, you use it, bathe with it, wash your hands, whatever you do with your soap. And you sit it in a little soap dish. You know if you sit it there too long and you use it, that soap will get real, real dry. And then it'll like start separating because it's an old soap. Why dry above soap does not get dry and it's still all together one piece. You don't see any dry marks anywhere. It's kind of drying out. I don't know what you put in that soap. That soap is good. And you can believe I got a little coupon. I just saw my text message today telling me I need to use it for a while. Dry buzz, tell me in the chat. Can is it can we buy the uh buy soap now and went to the site twice to try to buy some but i think it's when you was preparing for your festival and you may have shut the internet down but my mama wants some soap and i tried to look on that or buy it and i couldn't so we want to buy some now i'm telling y'all if y'all want some good soaps try out dryer buzz soaps and I, I bet you i said the name wrong soaps by dry buzz she's in the chat you will not be disappointed that soap is very very moisturizing it bubbles up real good i love that soap Again, I'm trying to buy some more right now, but I'm just trying to wonder what do you do 
where it don't like dry out like soaps you buy at the grocery store. Uh, uh, let me get back. What was I talking about? When I seen dry buzz, it threw me all the way off. Oh, by getting ready for work. Okay. Again, I don't know if you're like me. You probably have a routine. Get yourself together. Get ready for work. Most people, I can assume, like take the onion and just scrub it all across the grill and then put your meat on it and that give it some extra flavor. Is that what you're saying? I've heard people do that before. Oh, you know what? I'm, ju I'm jumping around. But when he said about the grill, let me tell y'all something my mama told me to do and I didn't know. And it worked. So I'm going to tell all my people on here so you can try it. You know how when you barbecue on your grill and sometimes you get like a, like the residue or something get kind of stuck to your grills? My mama had me take heavy duty tinfoil, ball it up in a ball. When you rub that tinfoil against your grill, anything that's on your grill is just going to come off. I was amazed because I, I didn't know if it was going to work. I just kept rubbing that tinfoil all across that grill. Any residue, it was almost like the grill got soft and smooth like when you first bought it. And I was just scrubbing it with uh, uh, aluminum foil. I say tinfoil because I'm from the south. Now where you are, you might say aluminum foil. Reynolds, whatever whatever you use. Ball it up. Just to a nice little ball and just start scrubbing it all across your grill. It's going to take anything on your, on your grill. It's going to take it off. I was amazed. So if you have not did it, do it. Again, I wasn't sure if it was going to work, but I can tell you it worked. Let me see. I just added turmeric and ginger and some oatmeal. Okay, good, because that's what she wants, the turmeric and ginger. So I'll get up in the morning, I'll go online, and I'll order it for Put into charcoal. Oh, so you put the onion into the charcoal, Terry? I had never heard that before. That's different. I've never heard that before. So see, learn something new. But now let me get back to this morning so I can get on my topics. It's already 8.30. I'll just be rambling. I get myself together. Now anybody who have upstairs, downstairs, if you leave in the morning and there's nobody else at your house, you probably cut everything off. And if it's dark outside, that means your house going to be dark. But I got my pur Now my purse is, um, my son bought me this Nike crossbody thing. It's just so convenient. Even though it looks like I'm going to work out. It don't match my work clothes, but still, I'll use it. So it's just like a crossbody. I thought I had it out here with me. It's just a crossbody Nike. Okay, so I got my crossbody Nike thing, and I'm just holding my phone in my hand. And I think I had uh, a plate where I had put me some dump cake on it last night. I was taking it back down. So I'm walking this dog. I walk these same steps every day. I'm walking downstairs, you know, down, down, down. Why I fell down them steps, y'all? When I tell y'all I'm sitting here with two swollen knees and they hurt like all oh, get out. I had to go to the doctor and get x-rays on my knees and my wrists. I fell down the last three steps this morning. When I tell y'all I was in pain and it's so funny. Yes, I fell down the steps. I mean, I was walking and I, I don't know what happened. I think I thought that I had, I had already made it to the bottom. I've been walking down these same steps for the last three years. I thought I had made it to the bottom and I was walking down. And I guess I just, I don't know. When I tell y'all I fell, and I have like a wrought iron on my um, uh, banister. You know, Miss G, come be safe, lady. I be trying to, uh, on my banister, it's like the wrought iron that go in between. And, you know, the other side is like a solid wall. So I'm going down the steps, and I thought I had made it to the bottom. And I stepped, and I, my whole everything just fell to the front like that. My legs bent. I fell down on both my knees. I don't know how I hit this wrist. I'm just glad my arm didn't get stuck in between the wrought iron while I went down those three steps. I could have broke my arm. The side of my leg was bruised. And I was just down there like this, stuck. Stuck. Now, I know I tell y'all all the time my mom stays here with me. Her bedroom is at the bottom of the steps. And she woke up and she came out there and she was just checking because it was like, a boo, 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 boo. you know, when you hear all that noise and your house is quiet, you, you're you going to hear something. You're going to uh, notice something like that. She came to check and I was just, I was just still stuck on the floor. You have to leave your porch light on. Now I'm glad you're home. You're going to be sore. It makes more. A porch light not going to help me inside my house though. The porch light that's outside. Dry, I say that's why I downstairs. I'm scared. Dry up. If you would have saw, see, I didn't post it over here on TikTok. I posted on my YouTube this morning. I did a live from the parking lot, and I talked about it on my live from the parking lot. And you know what I said? I said, mm -mm, I want me a one story. 
Yeah, I was inside my house, kitty. Inside the house, getting ready to go make me a cup of coffee so I can get in my truck, you know, and start my day so I can go to work. Lo and behold, I fell. I was just stuck down there on the floor. I could get up, but I had to just, my knees was hurting so bad, I had to make sure that I was okay. And my mom kept asking me, asking me if I was all right. And I was like, yeah, mama, I'm going to just get up, make my cup of coffee, and I'm going to go ahead and go to work. So I got up, you know, I got my got myself together, got up, made sure, you know, my clothes were still straight, made my coffee, got in the truck. Remember, I drive from one side of town to the other side of town to work. The longer I drove, the more my legs start throbbing. I'm like, oh, hell. But I had a meeting that was scheduled for today. They ended up canceling it, but I knew that I needed to go to this meeting. They ended up canceling it. So I'm just driving to work. The longer I'm at work, hurt, 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 hurt. I got to work. And I park, I have to park far and then I have to walk quite a distance to get inside my building. This is the one day I didn't see the security guards zooming around doing nothing as usual, going in the parking lot. I had to walk over. When I got to my desk and sat down, I said, oh my God. Uh, but the longer I sat at my desk, it looked like everything started hurting. My knees started hurting. So I pulled my pants leg up and look, my knees is all bruised up. My ankle is kind of swollen a little bit. This wrist started hurt. And the longer I sat, the more it started hurting and throbbing. I said, oh, no. I got online. I said, oh, no. Let me make me a doctor's appointment and see if I can get in today so they can do an x-ray on my knees just to make sure I didn't mess up nothing. I said, but, oh, wait till I tell my people on TikTok. I didn't fell down my own damn steps. I said, I don't know how that happened. I don't, I, I wish, let me see. I can't even show y'all. It's all swollen and bruised. Both, but both of them, that's the bad part. I fell down. And at the end of my steps now, upstairs in my house going down my steps, because my house is new. So most houses when they're built, they still build them with carpet. So my house still has relatively new carpet. So once you get to the bottom, like as soon as you get down at the bottom, that's tile floor. So, you know, that's hard. Ain't no cushion. And both my knees slammed on the uh, uh, tile and my body weight went behind you know it's everything just hit the floor like this and when i tell you these knees oh my god they hurt so bad right now they really do and like i said i had bruises on the side of my leg i'm like well, how in the world did i get bruises on the side not the knee but like on the side like on the side of the calf i guess that's a better way to describe it i'm like i don't even know how i got bruises there i don't know if my leg could have hit the wall on the side where i was but i was <laughs> When I came home, me and my mom was talking about it. We was both laughing. I mean, we was both laughing because I had to. Show, I was just stuck like this down on the floor. <laughs> I can laugh now. That don't take away from the pain in my legs. But, you know, you got to be able to laugh at yourself. But I was stuck down on the floor. I say, Lord, not stuck where I couldn't get up. But I was scared to kind of just jump up and move real quick. You know, I still feel like I'm young and spry. Like my grandma used to say, spry. I still feel like I'm young and I can just uh, move around. But the way my knees hurt it and I hit that floor, I didn't want to move too quick in case there was something really wrong with my leg. You can laugh now. I always laugh when I fall while I be on the ground. Oh, you laugh while you still on the ground. You know what, Kitty? I couldn't laugh too quick this morning. I had to make sure these legs were still going to work. You know how my mind be thinking, I got to go to work make my money. Luckily, I don't have to do a whole lot of walking at my job. Most of my stuff is administrative, so I'm always at my desk. But, man, just sitting there all day, my legs were killing me. I couldn't wait to go. I couldn't wait to leave. I left work like an hour early to go to a doctor's appointment so that they can. They did the x-rays. In the morning, I should have an email with the results of the x-ray. Oh, James Graham said, don't be, you're not supposed to get up too quick. You're supposed to wait. And that's what I did. Now, if I was a lot younger, I probably would have just gotten up. Because everything felt okay except my knees. Again, I fell down on both and they went on that hard towel. <laughs> Excuse me. But right now at 54 years old, I ain't trying to jump. I ain't trying to get up too quick. Mm-mm. Be stuck like that. Mm-mm. <laughs> I told you I can laugh about it now, but this morning I was like, oh my Jesus. But that's what's been going on with you, butterfly, y'all. Over the weekend I had my granddaughter uh two days. I had the oldest one. She was here with us, and then Sunday, we got the three-year-old. 
Carolyn Bacon. Hey, Carolyn. She said, I fell down my stairs on my buttocks. I had a doctor's appointment the next day, and I told my doc, and she laughed. Ooh, the doctor even laughed that you falling down the steps. Oh, my goodness. And you know what? I think, now, see, this is the thing. I think the doctors be trying to look, because you know what the doctor said. And, again, the insurance I have, I can use a specific um, system to go to the doctor. So I, I wasn't able to get into where I normally go. But I was still able to use the system and I just went to a different location that I've been to before, but I've never seen that doctor. But that was the only appointment. My agenda was to get an appointment just so they could put me an order in for x-rays. Um, and he was like, oh, so what happened? Oh, okay. Yeah, you're right being broke. You got to laugh at yourself and don't be so serious about everything. Even though this was a serious fall and I thank God I didn't hurt myself really, really bad. But uh, sometimes you got to just laugh and be like, thank God, you know, because it could have been worse. And so the doctor say, uh, so who was at the house with you? How did you fall down your own steps? I think they was thinking somebody could have tried to abuse me. So I said, wait, wait a minute. Do you think I'm close to that senior citizen age? You know, that's the kind of question they start asking senior citizens. Or do you live in the house alone? Who's there with you? How did this happen? It's certain questions they start asking. I say, uh, is he trying to ask me some of them senior citizen questions? <laughs> I'm like, mm-mm. And I told him, I said, no, it's just my mom. She's there with me. I said, but it was just me. I said, I don't know how I misstepped and thought. And my pants wasn't too long. You know how sometimes your pants can get long? Maybe your shoe can get caught in the leg of the other pants. It was none of that. I just, I honestly don't know what happened. Not seeing your sister. Yes, at the hospital, they start asking questions. Like when you reach a certain age, they start ask, asking different questions to make sure that you're not being abused as a senior citizen. So I'm like, oh, why is he asking me this? Do you think somebody's trying to abuse me at home? I say, but more so than that, do you think I'm a real senior citizen? I'm barely, barely. I haven't even met 55. I can't even get a Ross discount yet. So I ain't no true blue senior citizen yet. I got to wait till I'm 55 to get that Ross discount. Oh, Carolyn say she said every patient she had has fallen down the stairs. Ooh. Being broke, this child said, oh, shit, I forgot. What you mean? You forgot that uh, they ask all those senior citizen questions when you reach a certain age? Watch. The older you get, you watch how those questions kind of change if they see like a little bruise on you, a little bump on you, or something like that. It's just a wind down. I just like talking to y'all. But let's get on these topics because I got quite a few. And look, it's already 9 o'clock. I've been just uh, rambling. For the last 40 minutes. So Texas Governor Abbott has signed into law House Bill 576, which is the Crown Act. Now, if you remember a week or two ago, I talked about the Crown Act and said that it had already been passed, but they needed the governor to sign off on it. Now, the Crown Act is uh, a House bill to ban race-based hair discrimination. This bill prohibits hair discrimination, hair discrimination in Texas workplaces schools and housing policies the law goes into effect september 1st 2023 so just know that the crown act has passed now some of uh, some other states may try to uh, pass a, a, a similar bill but this is so you can't be discriminated by your hair meaning if um you know this only applies to us because i don't think they discriminate against them when it comes to their hair so you may start seeing people in the workplace possibly wear more natural hairstyles, more uh, hairstyles that be a little bit more extreme than what they're wearing right now because they know that they can't have any type of repercussions from doing it in the workplace. So we'll see. So just kind of keep a lookout on that after September 1st. The bill, the, uh, the law goes into effect September 1st here in Texas. It's called the Crown Act. You know, I always try to give y'all a feel-good story. I always try to if I can find one. And I found one today. Cameron Tucker, who is 16, was suspended for one day from school after being caught cutting hair in the restroom at Renaissance High School in Detroit, Michigan. His uncle showed him how to cut hair one day and told Cameron that he would only show him one time and he wasn't going to show him anymore. And Cameron was like, okay, show me. So he did. Cameron was a natural and wanted to cut his cousin's hair and picked up the clippers and went to work. As most teenagers, he started posting his before and after photos on his social media, and then he started cutting hair of his football teammates. His restroom business grew. However, a teacher walked in on him during study hall while he was cutting another student's hair. 
The same day, his mother received a call that Cameron needed to be picked up from school because he was running a barbershop in the restroom. The teacher said he had a line of young men waiting to get their hair cut and hair was everywhere in the restroom. The school administrators appreciated his hustle and he caught the attention of Fox 2 who, com who connected him with Sebastian Jackson of the social club Grooming Company. Sebastian has a high profile list of clients and said he wanted to mentor Cameron if he was interested in an apprentice at his shop and that the opportunity was going to be there waiting for him. And Cameron actually went and said it was an amazing experience and he was glad that he went and that's something that he's going to pursue. So I'm glad that the school wasn't too hard on Cameron. I, I agree with he should have got suspended one day if that was outside of his um like the school handbook, and I'm quite sure it says that you can't run a business inside of the school. So I was in agreement that he gets suspended for one day. I'm just glad they didn't go extreme and expend him for uh, weeks at a time. And I'm glad that somebody got the story to the news. The news got him in contact with somebody who's actually running what appears to be a successful business so that he can be mentored and go into an apprenticeship because this is something that he found that he liked. So I say that was a feel-good story. So I was glad to hear that about Cameron Tucker, who's only 16. He didn't say it was a, a distraction for the other kids. That's a good story. Cameron was getting his hustle on. Yes, he was. and But you know what? He was, and I'm quite sure the little kids was paying him. But look at the, he was doing a good service for his co-workers, his, uh, not, let me, co-workers, for the students. Those boys probably needed haircuts. And I'm quite certain that the what he was charging in the high school restroom was a lot less than what the men were charging at the barbershop. But I said, I thought that was pretty neat of the administrators to not be too hard on Cameron, but just hard enough to let him know, hey, you are breaking the rules and you have to follow the rules and you can't run an enterprise inside the restroom at school. So that was pretty cool. A four-year-old boy was pronounced dead. After being left in a locked car in the 200 block of Oriole Street Friday, the family is saying that they were looking for the child and don't know how he got in the car. There was also a two-year-old girl in the car who is in stable condition. The Houston Police Department said that they are investigating and it's too early to say if charges will be filed. Four years old and two years old. You know, I always, when I hear stories like this, I always think about my grandkids. They're six, no, five. She'll be six next week. Five and three. I can't even see my five-year-old going out to get in my car. I can see if she was to do something like that, my two, my three-year-old is so busy, she's not even going to try to follow behind the five-year-old to go try to get in the car. Do y'all think it's possible for a four and a two-year-old just to go get in a car and lock themselves in there? In the chat, let me know. Do y'all think that's possible? And one of the questions that they kept asking on the news, I was, you know, I was looking at the uh, the comments, and they kept saying, "But where were the parents?" Now they didn't say if these if these were siblings. I can assume they were not. I think had they been siblings, they would have said that in the article that I was reading. But I'm trying to think. Where were the parents where a two-year-old and a four-year-old can find themselves, find themselves locked in a car? I don't know. And I guess the kind of parenting that I do around here and that my mama has done and that my sons will do if it was their daughters, they're not just going to let their kids out of their sight to just go lock themselves in a car. First of all, well, I can only speak for my car. I have an SUV, so they couldn't get up in there if they wanted to. Uh, the five-year-old probably could, but she even have a hard time just pulling the door open once the car is locked, uh, unlocked so that she can get in the back seat. Some doors lock as soon as the driver door is closed. I want is that an old car because my car won't lock if the keys are not in there. So that I guess it depends on what kind of car. I don't know. No, they were left how they opened the door. See, that's what I'm saying. It was too much that they didn't say. And maybe they're just trying to hold back on some of this information until they complete their investigation. But yeah, an adult should not have been that far behind. Them. Right, Kitty, that's what I'm saying. Why wasn't an adult somewhere around a two and a four-year-old? Let's just say the four-year-old is... Um, a smart four-year-old and able to kind of move around by himself. But a two-year-old, uh, you got to stay on top of a two-year-old. That's a toddler who can get into anything. So why wasn't an adult 
attentive to that two-year-old. Okay, Kitty said the door may have already been open, possibly. Kids are curious unless they were pretending like they were driving. Okay, I can I can see some kids playing like they're driving, but where was the parent in that that didn't see that a two-year-old was just going missing? If now, when I have my little two-year grandbaby over here, if I don't see her moving around, around, I'm getting up walking to go see where she at. If if it's just for a small amount of time. Because I know you have to watch them. They can get into anything. So I'm just saying, how did the two-year-old get in a car? That's my thing. How did, I don't know. I think it just may be something more to this. I can't wait to see. Uh, I'm going to check the news. I'm going to check the website tomorrow or the, maybe the day after to see if they've had any other developments. Because I'm kind of concerned how that's going to turn out. A Connecticut bakery worker was terrified after a hungry black four-foot-tall bear barged into the garage and stole 60 cupcakes. Miriam Stevens owns Taste by Spellbound said her employees were loading cakes into the van when a bear decided to stroll in. The employees started screaming and scared the bear off, although it returned three times. So the bear came back three times. Surveillance uh, uh, video obtained by WTNH, I'm assuming it's like at the news station, showed the bakery workers walking around the business trying to scare off the bear, but then they took off running when the bear scared them. The bear finally left when the owner continually honked the horn of the van and then the bear just left. There's been a rise in a series of troubling interactions between black bears and humans in Connecticut lately. In 2022, 67 bears entered the homes of residents in Connecticut, and that's up from 45 in 2020. Can you imagine you outside in your garage and you look around and you got a bear almost out of eye with you? You wouldn't even know what to do. I think people would probably be so scared and just be like, you know, just caught like they say deer, uh, what they say deer is caught in the headlights. I can imagine that you and your, because I'm just picturing my garage downstairs. I could just imagine pitter paddling around in the garage and all of a sudden you look around and it's almost like seeing a human being just, you know, pop up in the in opening of your garage and you're startled and you wouldn't know what to do. I think most people would be like that with a bear. Because I would, I would be terrified. I'm telling you, them lizards almost made me hurt myself uh, out on the patio the weekend. So, you know, if them lizards almost hurt me, you know, see... I think my knees hurt now. Hell, I probably really been in fell down trying to get through that junky garage of mine to get inside from a bear. And came back three times. But I think he came back because he knew it was food there. Because I guess that garage opened to the actual bakery and they were loading stuff up. They were getting ready to go make a delivery. And they say the bear came back and ate 60 donuts. I mean, not donuts, cupcakes. 60 cupcakes in Connecticut. Now, speaking of eating food, we're going to jump on this next story. Clifton Williams, 64, of Louisville, Kentucky, is accused of shooting his roommate in the ass after he ate his last hot pocket. Clifton has been charged with one count of second-degree assault. The roommate said he tried to fight Clifton back, but he went back into the residence, and Clifton first started throwing towel at the man. So the man was in the apartment, ate his hot pocket. Clifton found out that he ate the hot pocket. If you don't know what a hot pocket is, a hot pocket is about the size of my hand. It's a little, um, like a rectangular shaped pastry. And it's usually stuffed with like cheese and meat or something like that. And you bake it in the microwave. I mean, you bake it in the oven. You can put it in a toaster oven. You can put it in the microwave. And it's hot pocket. It's almost like a pizza in a square shape. Uh, like a, not square, like a rectangular shape. And it's like crust and it's stuffed with something. It's called a hot pocket. And I guess... Clifton had one hot pocket left, I can assume, and his uh, roommate ate the hot pocket. Clifton got mad and started throwing pieces of tile at him. So I guess maybe they had loose tile in the kitchen or something. They started throwing the tile. The friend or whoever, I guess, ran outside. Clifton, they started kind of tussling. Clifton went inside, got a gun, came back and shot the roommate in the ass for eating his hot pocket. So now he's been charged with second degree assault yeah the roommate said he tried to fight Clif clifton back but when he came back and he came back with a gun 
So now his Williams bond is set at $7,500 and he was ordered to not have any contact with his roommate. And they wouldn't give the roommate any, they wouldn't give the roommate's name. Why? I don't know. That must have been a last, last hot pocket. I guess it was. Now, just think about it. Do you think that's extreme? If somebody just ate your food, if you had a roommate, I've never had a roommate. I don't, I've never experienced that. So I've never had to share my space or share my things with anyone. But some of you on here may have had a roommate before. How would you have felt if your roommate ate your last food item that you knew was yours, but your roommate ate it? Cause I'm assuming it had to have been the last, maybe he's done that before. Maybe they's, maybe that was just like the icing on the cake. And Clifton Williams said, you know what, I'm mad. And just shot him in the ass for eating his Hot Pocket. So has that ever happened to anybody on here where you've had a roommate and they uh, crossed boundaries and ate something that was yours? We get upset and ask him to go buy it back. Carolyn says she would ask him to go and buy it. Yeah, that would have been a better uh, option than shooting a man. That I did remember reading. They say it was a non-life threatening. And maybe just went into the fleshy part of his butt. You know, and didn't actually go into all of his pelvic area where he could have maybe hit something else. But yeah, the bullet could have got stuck in the butt. Can you imagine getting shot in your ass and then you ain't able to sit down and walk? How you gonna sit down on the toilet? I bet that have to be real painful. But he was upset. That man probably has done more in that apartment than just eat that hot pocket. That hot pocket just took that man over the edge. That's what it was. He probably had been saving that. Say, you know what? That's going to be my lunch on Friday. Oh, you know, I'm going to come home Friday night and that's going to, I'm going to eat that while I'm watching a movie. He probably had plans for that one last hot pocket and that uh, roommate ate it and that just took him over the edge. That's all you see on the news. People are just reacting crazy nowadays compared to just being a little bit more rational, kind of thinking things out. But I thought that was extreme to shoot somebody over a hot pocket, but. You know, he may like Hot Pockets like I like Limey. Now, I ain't going to shoot nobody over Limey, but I'm just saying he may really like Hot Pockets. And he probably had plans for that one Hot Pocket when that man ate it. And you know what? I can only imagine. He probably put it in the microwave. Clifton was probably outside like, wait a minute. I smell Hot Pocket. Let me go inside. You know how that microwave go ding? And that ding sent him over the edge. He, uh -uh. he started hitting him with those tiles. But yeah, when I saw that, I said, oh, let me tell my people. So if somebody eat your food and you don't want them to eat your food, make sure that they know what the boundaries are. But don't shoot nobody over a hot pocket. You know, if I see anything being recalled, I try to let y'all know. So if you have the item, you can I can tell you what to do with it. Harlem Street Publishing, how you doing? Okay, now, here's a recall. Trader Joe's is recalling jars of their instant cold brew coffee. They said that they were notified by the supplier that the product may contain glass. To date, no injuries have been reported. The product SKU number is 67436. Again, if you have a Trader Joe's in your area and you've purchased the Trader, hey Harlem, if you've purchased the Trader Joe's cold brew coffee with SKU number 67436 and has an expiration date of June the 13th, 2024 or expiration date of 12 30 2024 uh customers are being advised to throw the item away or return it to the store for a full refund if you have any questions you can call trader joe's customer relations at 626 area code 599-3817 again for trader joe's you can call the customer service relations at 626-599-3817 and ask more questions about the cold, uh, cold brew coffee that they're recalling. You know, I got to just try to keep y'all up on stuff. You never know who lives where. I talked to my niece two weeks ago, and she said she loved Trader Joe's. She said she buys stuff out of there all the time. Now, I've gone to Trader Joe's like twice. And Trader mm -hmm. Joe's, if you don't know, mm -hmm. is a... The hell? The TV be making all kind of weird noise. Trader Joe's is a... Uh, grocery store here in Houston. I don't know if they're anywhere else. I honestly don't know. But um it was okay, but they didn't have any of the brands that I was familiar with. So I just kind of walked around and just looked, but I didn't purchase anything. I think right at the register when it was time to leave out of the store, I think I bought me a uh, a candy bar and paid for my candy bar and walked out of the store. But I was like, 
I really don't like this store. I couldn't find anything that I said that I just had to have. And I think I went back another time and it was the same thing. So I've just never been back to Trader Joe's. But it's actually pretty popular down here. I like H-E-B. Now, I don't know if any of you have little girls who are interested in going to the movies over this weekend, but Disney's latest movie, The Little Mermaid, brought in a whopping $95.5 million in North America. The movie was shown on 4,320 screens as of Sunday. The projection is that by yesterday, no, today is Tuesday? Yeah, the projection is that by Monday evening, the movie would have reached $117.5 million. It's been ranked as the fifth biggest Memorial Day weekend opener. Haley Bailey plays Mer Mermaid Ariel and is said to have done an amazing job. Now, I haven't seen the movie, but I actually want to see it. And it was directed by Rob Marshall with a reported budget of $250 million before marketing. The Little, Mer the Little Mermaid tells the story of a yearning, wayward daughter who cuts the devil's deal to swap her fins for a pair of legs. So congratulations to Haley Bailey. Uh, for doing an, an amazing job with this movie. They say her singing was amazing and her acting was amazing. So I'm quite sure other big things are going to be coming up for Haley Bailey. She's uh, one half of the duo, Chloe Chloe and Haley. There's, I think they're sisters. I think they're sisters and they are uh, like R&B pop singers. My family and I went to see it on Sunday afternoon. He was, She was very good. Oh, so you did see it. Well, great. I want to see it. I'm surprised I haven't heard my little granddaughter say anything about it, but I actually want to see it. So kudos to Haley Bailey for being in a movie that I'm sure was number one over the weekend. Anybody else saw it over the weekend? Okay, so they're sisters from Atlanta. Okay, cool. I heard something before Chloe, Chloe, Chloe and Haley, excuse me, a couple of years ago, but I never heard any of their music. Now, it's my understanding that Beyonce, I think she mentors them or they sing under maybe her record label or something like that. But Beyonce had something to do with Bailey. I mean, Chloe and Haley Bailey. But it seems like out of the two sisters, Clo uh, what's her name? Haley has been doing more things uh, as far as uh, entertainment than the sister Chloe. So we're going to see how that's going to work out. So Kitty said, yeah, I'm right. That uh, Beyonce, are you saying that Beyonce has something to do? She's like a mentor or something to them. But I do believe by Haley doing so well in this movie and the movie being number one, she's going to get a lot more exposure. And I'm sure she's going to get more acting uh, roles. Looking they, forward to seeing what else they, what else they um, bring to the big and small screen. Okay, Haley is the quiet one. Okay, so Chloe is the more outgoing of the two sisters. Okay, I'm going to have to check them out. But I was glad to see that her movie was number one. And hopefully more big things will be happening for these young ladies soon. All right, so we're going on to our next topic, y'all. It's 9.05 and I'm down to my last two topics. So we're doing pretty good. I'm going to be off of here in a little bit. Elizabeth Holmes, she's 39, dropped out of Stanford in 2003, is the youngest self-made female billionaire but she's been convicted and is expected to turn herself into a federal prison in Bryan, Texas to start serving her 11-year, three-month term. She and her partner were indicted in 2018. She will have to serve at least 85% of her time. She gambled with her freedom and now will ultimately pay, pay the price behind bars. She is the owner of Theranos, a blood testing company that was allegedly plagued with equipment that had mechanical issues. She promised investors that her technology could do hundreds of tests off of a single drop of blood. She, 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 said, oh, she is said to have lied to investors while hoping her defective technology would work. She was exposed in 2015 by Wall Street Journal reporter John Carreau, who later wrote the book Bad Blood. It's been reported that she could have avoided the harsh punishment if she would have been more cautious with her wagers. She bet on herself and lost big time. Per Fox 26 News, she refused to take any accountability for her crimes even after being convicted. She will be leaving her affluent community in Southern California to join inmates that are actually looking forward to her moving into their cell block. Her former boyfriend and partner, Sonny Belwani was sentenced to 13 years in prison. 
He surrendered to a federal prison in Terminal Island in April. Her story inspired the Hulu series, The Dropout. Has anyone seen that series on uh, Hulu? I don't have Hulu, but I know someone who does, so I can actually watch it. So I said, hmm, I read the story about this lady with the technology in line and um, having faulty equipment and bamboozling the investors. I said, you know what? I may check out the dropout on Hulu. Convicted, I think, in her, the story broke about her in 2015. In 2018, I think that's when she was indicted. 2018. Her and her boyfriend were indicted. So from 2018 to now, that's been about five years. She's had two daughters in those five years. They threw all that money at her. All of those investors, yeah, they started giving her tons of money. She became a billionaire. So now she's going to have two small children that are going to have to be, because she's with another guy now, two small children that's going to be raised without their mom for the next almost 12 years. I say, wow, that's really sad for the kids, not for her. Because if she was bamboozling those investors, I mean, she got to suffer consequences. But I just hate to see that happen to her daughters. Now, and I can be wrong. When I was looking at her on the news the other day, okay, so she has two kids and one is an infant. Okay, so one is an infant. Maybe her stomach was still kind of swollen from just having given birth. Because when I saw her on the news the other day, she looked like she was like still pregnant. I was like, oh man, that pregnant lady's getting ready to go to the pen. But her stomach could have still been kind of swollen if she just had the baby. Wow. It's still sad, though. Because that means the baby's not going to have time to really bond with her. Because she has to turn herself in, I think, Monday. If it... Well, it might be next Monday. Since this Monday was a holiday. Or maybe it's, you know, later this week. But, oh, my mama just hollered from downstairs. Say the lady had to turn herself in today. Oh, uh, it's so unfortunate for her kids. I really hate to hear that. I just think um, kids should be with their parents at all if they can. If they can. You know, there's some circumstances that's out of the parents' control and they can't. But I think when a child can be with a parent, I think that's the best place for the child. So I thought that was real sad. Mm -mm. And uh, Dry Buzz say, watch as soon as she goes to jail, her ideas will work. Not if she don't get that faulty equipment fixed. Her technology just wasn't there. So somebody else might just take what she started and build upon it. And they may come up with a better uh, better equipment. And hopefully the boyfriend or who's ever going to have these children full time will continually take the kids to go see their mom so that she can still have some interaction with her child and the children can still see their mom. What are y'all thoughts? Do y'all think you should take kids to go see their parents in jail? What do y'all think about that? Do you think that parents should, not parents, do you think parents in jail should be able to still have visitation? Do you think it's a good idea to take kids to jails and prisons to see their parent? Because it's not always the dad. Sometimes it's the mom that's in there. See if you say not at a young age. Kitty said yes, she's a, she does. And you know, I guess it can I guess it can be good and bad taking a kid to see their parent in jail. They still can build a relationship with the parent, you know, as far as they can, as far as I don't even think you'd have physical contact or anything like that. I guess it depends on the state, what the crime is. I think some of those things play a part in how your visitation is. But I often wonder how does that affect the child when they have to leave the parent in jail? And then just go back to a regular life. Does that affect them more than not having a parent around at all and never going to see? Yes, that's their mother no matter what. As long as she didn't abuse them, she should see them. No, I agree. That's why I was saying I hope they take the child there so they can still continue to build a relationship with the mom. But I wonder how does that affect the child after the child leaves the jail, especially if they start getting older and have more understanding. How does that affect the child emotionally? When they know, okay, I'm leaving my parent in jail, but now I'm coming home and I'm living my regular life. You know, I, I personally don't know anybody who had to go through that. But I often wonder how, how does that affect the child? Hmm. 
I think they need to visit so they won't forget their parents. I agree. I think they need to, but I often wonder. You know what? Maybe when they go see the child, go see the parent, some counseling should be set up for when they're not visiting the parent to help them kind of reconcile all of those emotions that I'm sure they have to go through. Hmm. I just wonder. That's interesting. All right, y'all. This is my last topic. This is my last topic. Courtney Kardashian. Now, anybody who's on social media probably have at least heard of the Kardashian clan. It's uh, Kim Kardashian, Khloe Kardashian, and Courtney Kardashian. Then you have the two Jenner sisters. Uh, I can't even think of their name right now. One of them is a model, supposedly was a billionaire from her product line. She had cosmetics. But Kourtney Kardashian, out of all the sisters, is the one who kind of is more low-key. You don't hear a lot about her. She was married to, his last name was Disick. I think his first name was Tom. And I'm, I'm probably has it wrong. Some, something Disick. Anyway, she had three kids with this man. She's no longer with him. I think they brought uh, Scott Disick. That's his name. My mama downstairs, Holland Scott. That's what it is. Scott Disick was with Khloe Kardashian. They never got married, but they had three children together. Well, over the weekend, social media was on fire because of what they heard her son say. Kourtney Kardashian, who is 42, has been slammed on social media for not disciplining her 7-year-old son, Rain, for cursing at her while playing a game with her and her siblings and his siblings. He said, oh, fuck, oh, shit. And Courtney can be heard in the background laughing at him. Now, I think this may be the same son who was on a trampoline. And you could hear him tell his mom, Mom, come over here and get on this damn trampoline or something to that effect. So there's been two videos of this young boy cussing at the mom. And Courtney's not doing anything. People on social media are slamming her and saying that she should have uh, disciplined him in some type of way. How many of you agree that if he was cussing, she should have disciplined him? Scott Disick, uh, that's right, Carolyn, Scott Disick and Courtney never married. Kylie and forgot the other one's name. Yeah, Kylie. That's ridiculous. He's seven years old. Seven years old. And she's laughing in the background. I, I remember growing up, you would hear older people say, uh-huh, laugh not, cry later. I just know growing up, we were not able to just cuss around our Mary. So she did marry that guy, Dryer. I know she was with this drummer, but I didn't know she got married to him. Oh, I feel myself getting sleepy. How many of you grew up and was able to curse in front of your parents? I know in the South, that's really not something that you generally see from kids. Now, if you hear them cuss, they're not cursing their parents. But how many of you were able, growing up, that you would you was able to cuss? Uh, Sylvia say, not her dry buzz say, would never. That's just not something that we were raised being able to do. We had to always be respectful. And just cussing was just not something little kids did in our family. That's just not what we did. Uh, not me and not around no adults, period, but I did cuss. Okay, Kitty say she cussed, but not around adults. Uh, best uh, draw buzz say my kids can't curse around me and they grown, okay? Like, I'm not the type, I, I just don't cuss around my mama either. You know what? My mama hear me cuss with the little stuff I do say on this TikTok, but just in her company and talking with my mom, I just don't cuss like that. Not at, Kitty say not at seven. Sylvia say I was too scared of my mama even now <laughs> as an adult. <laughs> Brown sugar say they had three weddings. Who had three weddings? Mm -hmm. I don't know who had three weddings unless Courtney got married three times to this drama. Maybe in different places. I can assume that's what you mean by three weddings. Okay, she's saying to the same guy, so maybe she married that drummer three times. Maybe they got married in like three different places so they can have three separate events for the people. I actually did it around my grandma and got backhanded. Ooh, we kidded. Now, speaking of that kitty, I was just talking to my mom over the weekend. 
and we were seeing we were looking at uh <clears throat> the small tv that's in the tv in the kitchen the little coffee nook and they were saying that this same little boy was telling his mom when they was jumping on the uh, trampoline he said something about mom get on this damn thing or something like that but damn was what he said and it's so funny because i told my mama i will never forget when i was a little girl maybe about this age maybe about seven six seven eight somewhere in that range i'll never forget. it's like i'm reliving it right now we were at my grandparents' house, and I spent a lot of time at my grandparents' house. And I can remember my mama telling me to get my shoes because we were getting ready to go somewhere. I don't know where. I can remember that it was a bunk bed in a room, and I can remember getting on all fours, hands and knees, looking under the bed, looking for whatever pair of shoes it was I was, I was supposed to find to go with my mama. I still say to this day, and I was just telling her this yesterday while we were sitting at the table. I still say to this day that I was like, dog, I can't find my shoe. By the time I got up off my hands and knees, my mama slapped me in my mouth so hard. She say, I said, damn, I can't find my shoe. To this day, I still say, I said, dog, I can't find my shoe. Growing up, I knew we couldn't curse in front of our parents. So I would have never disrespected my mama like that. And I would have never been so bold as to attempt to curse knowing my mama was right there or cursing in my grandparents' house. My mama slapped me in my mouth so hard, I'll never forget that. And when I told her yesterday, she looked shocked like it's like she forgot about it. But that has stuck with me my whole life because I still say I did not curse. <laughs> and I got hit in my mouth. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, look, Kitty said she heard damn. We couldn't say dog or shut up. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you, I I said, dog, I can't find my shoe. Because I know I was probably getting myself ready because I was going somewhere with my mama, you know. And she hit me in my mouth and, Lord, have mercy. You might have just started and got slapped. Mm-hmm. Look at my mama, brown sugar, putting a crying face. <laughs> I just told her yesterday, I said, Mama, I know I didn't say damn. I know I didn't. And I can remember getting up on all four. And she hit me right in my mouth. But I know I didn't curse. I did not curse. Herman Adolphus, how you doing? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Y'all, it is 920. I didn't went through my topics just that quick. But I'm going to have some more for y'all tomorrow, but that's all I got. Y'all know we don't be on here real long. I just talk about my little topics and we get on up off of here. I just want to see if everybody had a good time over the weekend. I'm going to ice up these knees because I'm telling you, just sitting here stiff, just still right here, they hurt. I'm going to get my little ice packs and put on my knees and look, see, you know what? It's so funny. Do y'all know a couple of weeks ago when I was on live, I kept saying, Ooh, I'm just sitting here rubbing my knees like an old lady. You know, they don't hurt or nothing. I'm just rubbing like an old lady and now they really hurt. And just rubbing them hurt, just touching them because they hurt so bad. But, uh, yeah, we getting ready to get up off of here, y'all. I appreciate y'all coming over here and hanging with me for a little bit. I'm on G Butterfly TV. But I'm getting ready to go ahead and get off of here. Y'all have a good night. Put that soap in your bed. Tomorrow going to be stiff. You know what? That's what I told my mama. And I think I was telling one of my employees today. I said, you know what? I said, I bet you tomorrow when I get up. Because I fell. You know, when you fall, you don't know how you pulling, what you're jerking. It, something else is probably going to be sore tomorrow just because of how I fell down those steps. But I know if hopefully it won't hurt as bad as these knees. If it don't hurt as bad as these knees, I'll be able to take it. But I'm getting ready to get off of here, y'all. Have a good evening. Well, now it's night. It's 923 Central Standard Time. So I'm going to say have a good night. I'll talk to y'all tomorrow. I'll try to find some more good topics that we can talk about. And I'll see y'all later. And now let me upload this so I can put it over there on Facebook since they don't want me to forget about them. And I'll talk to y'all later. Remember, do not be out there drinking and driving. Bye.